This is one of the virtual machines that we will be using called Kali Linux. I skipped the installation and to shorten the length of the video. Um, Kali is a Debian Linux based penetration testing arsenal used mainly by security professional and to perform security assessment. And therefore, a familiarity with the Linux operating system is very useful. Almost all hackers use the Linux operating system because it allows programs and tweaks that aren't possible in Windows or Mac operating system. Perhaps all hacking tools that you can find make use of this operating system. And it offers a range of tool set customized for identifying and exploiting vulnerabilities in the system. One of the unique benefits of Kali Linux is that it's designed to follow the flow of a penetration testing service engagement. So it contains most of the interfaces that you need for hacking, which include the creation of fake networks, spoof messages, exploit database, and even crack Wi-Fi passwords. The Kali Linux file system is based on a Unix file system hierarchy standards. It means that the tools can be run from anywhere on the system. So let's touch on a few directories that you will be interacting with regularly. Uh, we've got a slash bin directory here, which contains essential system commands binaries for all users. For example, the grep command, ls command, the cat, the shenji mode command, the shi mode, um, the directory command. This is equivalent to system32 for Windows users. And we've got the slash etc here, which contains all the administration and configuration files, things such as passwords. Another important directory is this one here, the slash root directory, which is a root user home directory. That is not to be confused with this one there, um, the slash directory, which is the root directory. There's a subtle difference between the two. I, this is the root directory and this is the root user home directory. Another important directory is the slash var directory. It contains variable data. Um, for example, websites, logs, database, tem temporary files, and much more. It is specific for each computer. Uh, it means that it's not shared over the network with other computers um, for all sorts of reasons. Right, let's get practical here and highlight 10 of the key commands which are the staple for Security Pro. Uh, the first one is, before you start using your Kali Linux machine, you need to make sure that you're up to date. And the command to update Kali Linux is quite straightforward and you get used to it since you'll have to execute at least once a week. And that's the command there, I ran it earlier as you can see. And uh, it's apt update and apt upgrade and you add the flag yes. Um, that's the first command. Um, the next one, it's quite a useful one. Say, for example, you want to search and list for software packages. Um, this command will be quite useful. Um, you can actually see um, it's, uh, it's a long list. Uh, usually, you might want to identify the particular package that you, you're looking for. So, um, say, for example, you're looking for Apache, um, then uh, you can just grep it as um, as highlighted in the command there, and then all you'll get is outputs uh, with the Apache um, keyword in it. So as you can actually see, it's a much more uh, limited list. Um, the next command is how to make or create a directory. Um, the command is mkdr. So for example, we want to create a directory called abc. That, that, will, that will do it. And usually you create a directory because you want to change into it. And the command would be cd apc. And uh, there you have it. So you can actually see that in the command line, we've got the apc folders or directories highlighted into it. And one of the common scenario is, for example, if you're cloning a directory from GitHub and then changing into it. The next command is how do you print to display the contents of a file? I created a file earlier on my desktop called uh, username.txt. So you just got to run this command and there you have it. It literally prints out the contents of the file. It often also concatenates um, content as well. So the next command is the she mode. Um, this command um, changes access permission to a file, a document, or a script. 
um, usually um, it's used in order to allow people to the right to execute a particular file. Um, how do you know about the permission of a file? Usually you start with uh, the long formal list. Um, if I say, for example, use um, this particular command on a text me file to see the permissions on it. If I run it, you can literally see that um, only the owner can read and write. Everybody else can read and nobody can execute it. And this is when you can change the permission of that particular file by using a shimold command. Um, in this particular case, um, I'm gonna give everybody the right to and to change it. So by adding um, a plus X flag to it, if I run it and uh, and I list the command permission again, you can actually see that a file is changed and everybody has um, exec an executable right on the file. And you can also tell the difference between an executable file and a non-executable one. And um, yeah, that's um, that's it for this particular command. The next command is a copy command, and um, there are tutorials to how to use it, but I'm just highlighting it here. Uh, another one is the history command. It gives you um, it gives you a list. It outputs every single command that uh, you've you have used um, up until now, really. So you can actually see if I run it, it can tell you all sorts of commands I've been using. It's quite a very good tool for aud um, for auditing. Um, the next command is trying to find out what the host name is. Um, this particular case is still the default <laughs> the default host name, Kali, but um, it's meant to be something else. Uh, you have got to change it um, once you've got your Kali set up. Um, the next command is uh, it's the interface configuration if if config. Uh, it's probably the first command that everybody knows about, and uh, it lists you every single um, interface um, on your system uh, in this particular one there. I've only got the Ethernet one and the uh, and local host. Um, if I had an, a, while, a Wi-Fi adapter um, plugged into um, plugged into the, into the machine, then it'd be highlighted into it as well. Um, the other command which we saw earlier is the LS command. So for example, I want to find out about um, the contents of the current directory, enter LS, and um, it, just completely list all the all the documents um, that happens to be in that doc um, in 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 the directory I'm I'm in, and um, the other command is um, if you want to find out where you are, you can actually use the print working directory command, and um, it tells you where you are in 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 in, in the hierarchy of the of, of your of 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 your of your system. Um, the next command also is who I am. Usually, when you've carried out a, a penetration, when you've compromised a vulnerable machine, and then you try and find out um, um, whose uh, whose privileges you happen to be with, and um, it tends to use this command who I am, and it it produces the same output as uh, as 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 the host name. Um, the the next one is if you want to reboot the system. Usually, you want to do it. Um, if, for example, um, your system is hanging or whatever it is and various other things. So I'm not going to do it now. And the other command is this sudo command. And it, it allows you to execute a command as another user. It's, common, it's commonly used to elevate permissions so that a command is run as an administrator. So it's, it's known as the root user as well. Um, another command is the ping command. Um, it's usually um, used in order to test the network connection. And say, for example, I want to, I'm literally pinning myself here, really. But essentially, um, you do it as part of a reconnaissance phase to see whether the host you're trying to communicate with is live. So, in this particular case, uh, I'm pinning myself and you can actually see that I've sent. Um, free um, free request and um, the connection is there because there's no packet loss. Um, the last command it's a, it's a networking information command. I'm not gonna show you the outputs of my network here, but essentially it's a net stat. It's quite a useful command to 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 run. Um, it, it gives you information about um, your 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 network to a degree. 
Well, that sums up our introduction to Kali. The next phase of the tutorial will be looking into Metasploitable 2 and then how to hack it. Thank you.